Hi everybody, so if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you probably realised by now I'm basically as mad as a bag of kittens. And I have this idea that when it comes to generation, there are two options. One is torque, which you use to turn an axle, and the other is speed. And it makes sense to me because, of course, torque and speed always play off against each other. You can use torque to generate speed or you can use speed to generate torque. So it kind of makes sense to me. But we've been working on that, on this idea of generation. And because we've been looking at speed, the generators have tended to be flat disks, like this one, with magnets arranged at the edge, north, south, north, south. The reason they're circular, incidentally, is um, I've got a lot of circular magnets. If I had a lot of square magnets, they'd be square. So that's the only reason they're circular. So we've been building these disks, and of course we have to put those into a generator housing, and we've been building these kind of generator disks with a serpentine coil. And the reason with the serpentine coil is because uh, another element of my crazy is that I like things to be simple to build, and serpentine coils are dead easy to build. Now, I've done loads of videos on how to make these, and I will obviously link in them. They're obviously 3D prints, and the, ST the STL files are in the description. So that makes the generator body with its pretty little cap on it, and then the disc drops in there, and what we need is some way to turn that. Now we've been doing an awful lot of wind generators, which are, are really, you know, where this is all heading. But there are other fascinating things that you can do with this. And what I've done is I've come up with this. Okay, this is what I've come up with, and I'm calling it the air engine. So the light blue is the ring, the cap that we just saw in the generator. The sort of cream colour is the disc that carries the magnets, and this purple pink colour is where the serpentine coil goes. So those three, the blue, the green, the pink, they make the generator section. Then we have these mysterious brown sections here. This is a cap, this is a rotor, this is the housing. They go together to make the generator, the input section, and then we have a blue handle. So that is obviously on Tinkercad. The link is in the description, and it's available to anybody who wants it. So as we saw before, that's the generator section put together. Now, the input, remember, all of these generators are basically the same thing. There's a generator section which is going to be magnets moving in a coil of some description or other. Then there's always going to be some kind of energy input device, whether it's a wind turbine or a water wheel or a hand crank or some pedals or whatever. This one, you actually blow down it. So we're going to blow down there. When we blow down there, it's going to turn that rotor. And you'll see that on the rotor, I've stuck a bit of 8mm bar, 100mm long, through the rotor. Because the rotor goes in that housing like that. So if we blow down here, that rotor will turn. There we go. Blowing on it turns the rotor. Turning the rotor turns this axle, that turns a big disc, and that generates. So all generators have those same basic components. Once you put those together, then you're going to have some kind of generator. And I'm calling this the blow generator. I'm going to use it to light a light, so it's going to be the blow torch. Now the cap, and, and the body incidentally, right there, has a bearing in it. Now I almost universally use 22mm by 7mm by 8mm bearings. It's 8mm in the centre, 22mm on the outside, 7mm thick, because they're skater bearings and they're really cheap and really easy to get hold of so they're not really a trouble for people. So once we put those together, what you need to do with this one is put a couple of 8mm washers on. So a washer there and a washer there. The reason is the washer will bear on the oops, inner race of the bearing and lift it a little bit off so it doesn't rub. So that makes it spin very freely. That goes on there like that. That goes on there like that. There we go. We press the cap down and then that goes through a bearing in the bottom of the generator housing, which is right there. That goes through there like that. What I've got here is an 8mm olive. They're used as a compression fitting. That goes on there like that, and then that goes on there like that. We glue the handle, which is the blue bit that we saw, onto a section there, and that is our blowtorch finished. So I'll glue all those together. Okay, and that's the bad boy together with its handling place. <laughs> I think it's awesome actually. It's perhaps a little chunky, but I love chunky after all. I'm a chunky fella myself. The two wires come out there, you breathe in there, and it will turn this. So let's do that. I 
and it acts like a flywheel. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but big. Whoop. Now, I get asked this a lot, actually. What do you do with it after? And I usually don't bother. I've done a couple of videos about what to do with these two wires. And again, it's always the same thing that you do. But with something like this, I mean, let's face it, it's meant to be a torch. Do you really want to be blowing in it? Which is why that's a flywheel. If you can take a charge off this, store that charge, then you blow on it and let the flywheel charge up something like, say, a supercapacitor or a small battery. Then you can use a charge in the battery to do things like light or light, which is exactly what we're going to do here. And it is actually stunningly easy because you can buy these things. This, it's, it's a garden light. Uh, and I got it from my local store and it was £1.50. Uh, incidentally, the magnets were £3.60, the wire was 35p, that was £1.50. And for some reason people think it's incredibly expensive to 3D print uh, in the cost of electricity, but actually it's about £1.30 for 10 hours of 3D printing. So I'm unsure of what that cost, but I'm guessing sort of in the £7. So we put the whole thing together for sort of round about 10 quid, and that's not a lot of money. Anyway, back to this. In this, what we've got is a whole bunch of exactly the electronics that we need. There's a little solar panel, so we've got a black and a red coming off. And here we've got a little lithium battery, we've got a charge protection circuit right there, it's feeding that LED and there's a little on-off switch. So everything we need is actually contained in that package. What we need to do is disconnect the little solar panel there. There we go. And we're going to use that black and red wire that we've got sticking out of there. These two wires, which come from our generator, we actually attach them to a rectifier, which is right here. So on that rectifier, we put those wires on the rectifier lines with the squiggly lines. And then on the top of here is a plus and a minus. The plus gets the red, the minus gets the black. So we connect those two up there like that. Stuff that whole lot back in there, and we're actually ready to go. Put our lamp on, and we've got our torch. And incidentally, this thing spins for absolutely ages. Anyway, I'm calling that my blowtorch, Mark One. <laughs> Look, it's awesome. <laughs> My mind, that was awesome, but it also shows the basic principles of any generation system whether it's a, a motor that's generating a Stirling engine, a steam engine, a water wheel, a windmill, you're blowing on it, it's a rain water gen, whatever it is, the same principles are being shown. There's some kind of generator, which is a magnet and coil arrangement that spins. There's some kind of energy input. Here we were blowing into it, but you could stick a water wheel on it or anything you wanted. Then when the two wires come out, you have some kind of rectifier, whether it's a one package rectifier or a diode and a little diamond. You put them through a voltage regulator and then because we were storing that energy, we had a battery and we had a battery charge circuit on off switch and then we use the energy to do a light. So all the principles are shown in this little blow torch. We were kind of lucky, I guess. Uh, I paid £1.50 for that, like I said, but they had them at 75 pence as well. So all of the electronics, that is the, except with part from the rectifier, the rectifier was five pence. All of the electronics, the voltage regulation, the battery control circuit, the battery, could cost you 75 pence or less, and you just have to hook up the black and the white wire. You can go more to town with it to understand those subsystems, but at the basics of it, that's all there is, and the entire thing is demonstrated in the blowtorch. I think it's an awesome thing by itself, particularly the way the generator acts as its own flywheel. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it inspires you. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.